The General Electric LM6000 gas turbine and its attached generator was commissioned for Genesis Energy in June 2004 at the Huntley site. This turbine is derived from aviation gas turbines similar to those fitted to the Boeing 747. It burns either natural gas or diesel. Let's see what makes it tick. A gas turbine consumes lots of air. To help us understand why and what happens, let's take a look at the airflow through the engine. Air is sucked into the inlet housing where it's cleaned by filters. It passes in through a bell-shaped structure called the inlet volute and into the first stage of the engine called the low pressure compressor or LPC. The five rows or stages of spinning blades and their matching stationary or stator vanes compress the air. This compression generates some heat so that when the air exits from the LPC it can be at approximately 100 degrees Celsius when the engine is at full load. This varies depending on how much power the engine is producing. After the air exits the low pressure compressor it passes through an area housing the variable bleed valves or VBV. These valves are like small automatic doors just a little larger than a CD case. The engine management computer controls when they operate to bleed off or dump air back to atmosphere. The reason for this is that when the engine is operating at low power settings, the LPC actually provides more air than the engine needs, so the excess is dumped or bled off. At higher power settings, all the air produced by the LPC is required for combustion, so the engine management computer closes the variable bleed valves so that no air is dumped. The next stage in the engine is the high pressure compressor or HPC. Here the air is further compressed by a ratio of 12 to 1. This brings the total compression of the air across both LPC and HPC to 30 to 1. The air temperature after the HPC increases to around 500 degrees Celsius at full load. A variable state of vane system is featured in the HPC to regulate the amount of air passing through and improve overall engine efficiency. 30 nozzles now add fuel into the hot air stream, producing a flame and causing rapid expansion of the combustion gases in the combustor section of the engine. Temperatures can reach over a thousand degrees Celsius at this point. The expanding gases exit through a two-stage high-pressure turbine. This rotates at over 10,000 RPM at full power. It drives the high-pressure compressor via a connecting shaft. After this is a five-stage low-pressure turbine spinning at 3,625 RPM when the machine is generating. This is the power turbine and it connects via a separate shaft to drive the low-pressure compressor and then out through the front of the engine to drive the generator via a reduction gearbox. Let's take a closer look at the electricity generation side of the unit. Remember that the output drive shaft from the turbine connects to the reduction gearbox. The low pressure shaft of the turbine rotates at 3625 RPM and the reduction gearbox reduces this to 3000 RPM, which is the speed required to drive the generator. The generator outputs 11,000 volts at 50 Hz, which is then transformed by an external transformer to 220,000 volts for supply onto the national grid. That's a quick look over the main turbine and generator sections of this unit. We'll finish now with a look at a few of the other externally visible features of the package. This is the inlet air duct for the anti-icing system. A fan draws air into the top of the duct. It passes through a set of tubes in the anti-icing heat exchanger where it's heated by the exhaust gases from the turbine. Another very visible feature of the unit are these two exhaust fan ducts. The turbine enclosure is held at a negative internal pressure by the electric fans in these enclosures. This design prevents any contamination or gases from being able to escape the turbine enclosure. In contrast, the generator enclosure is held at a positive pressure by fans at this location. And generator cooling air vents to atmosphere through this duct. This completes the overview of the unit.